sorry about the handheld footage. I didn't feel like grabbing my tripod. Okay, 14 volts coming off the panels right now. They're rated at 18 volts at noon or something like that. Okay, we're pulling 9.72 amps at the moment. That's not bad. Uh, battery showing 71%. Battery voltage 12.5. Hello and welcome to, um, well, Carlin's Worlds. Yeah, that should work. I'm a wanderer, a tinkerer, sometimes a nomad, a military veteran. I do things differently. There will be tinkering. I have a motorcycle, a truck, and a school bus. I live off grid, so there will be some solar, batteries, inverters, and maybe even some wind. It blows. And that's all I can fit into about 30 seconds. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Cool. On with the show already. Okay, I didn't shoot any video on the install. This isn't exactly a how-to channel anyway. So I picked up a MPPT charge controller. This is a 20 amp charge controller. Got this off of Amazon. Had decent reviews. It's a nice beefy looking unit. It's got, it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you look at it in the picture, you're not really sure how big it's gonna be. All right, so it's six inches wide and eight inches high, okay? It's also, it's about two inches deep. It's got nice, it's got some nice heft to it and it's got really big heat sinks on it. Um, I doubled up or actually I got three layers of OSB because the screws that I had available were all too long. So I just figured, all right, I'll just stack up a couple there. Um, I actually shot a little bit of glue on the OSB, stuck it up there, ran the screws through it, held it down good, and puddles of glue underneath. Okay, so the way I'm wired, this pair of wires here with the um, loom goes straight to the solar panels. I have that come in, went to a screw terminal, and then off the screw terminal goes into the, the one marked solar. This one goes straight to the battery. I'm not running any switches, breakers, fuses, anything on, on here yet, which would be a really smart idea. I just haven't got around to it yet. Uh, so far, so good. I'd recommend putting something in there. Now, also, I don't have any breakers or switches off of the big fat wire going to the inverter. That would also be a good idea. All right, so you can do better. Uh, let's see, I'll show you the box this came in. I don't know, I mean, I'm sure this isn't necessarily the best one you can get. It was probably the cheapest one I could find. So this is it. MPPT solar charge controller. This is a 20 amp controller. The label on the controller itself says rich solar. The box doesn't have any branding at all on it. So probably a factory in China cranked a bunch of them out. Yeah, no branding on the box at all. Nice. Anyway, so I'm gonna let it run for a while. I mean, unless this thing really causes me problems, I'm gonna leave it in place. Now the one that it's replacing, this was a cheap, uh, eBay PWM charge controller. This one was rated at 30 amps, I think. Uh, no, this one is a 20 amp also, okay. Look at how much smaller it is though. I mean, it's half the size, right? So, I don't know if size is a factor in here at all, but it's not very big, all right. Um, I'm not gonna go long-winded on the technology on here. MPPT, I'm pretty sure stands for Maximum Power Point T. Threshold or something like that. It's the, the theory is it's better able to get more power to your battery in a more efficient way. So your battery should charge faster with one of these is the idea, okay? The rest of the setup is the same. Um, 
Windy Nation 1500 watt power inverter modified sine wave. A lot of people comment on that. Um, four deep cycle batteries from Walmart. Uh, pretty dusty, dirty, not well maintained. Uh, the rest of this is just, I'm using this for storage right now. So that's that. Four big batteries running in parallel, 12 volt system. Simple. And again, this is coming from the solar um, Harbor Freight solar kits. These are three of the 100 watt kits. So the first four is the first kit, the next two plus these two, and then those four are the third kit. Those are all wired in parallel. And what I did, just to tie it all together, I used some screw terminals again here. If I can get down where I can see it, there we go. I cut off all the ends of the solar panels. I cut them all the same length, so they should be approximately equal. And then put screw terminal ends on the wires and wired them all to here. And this wire goes to the other set. Uh, I pulled a wire through a conduit. That's just underground, just so I don't trip over it. And on this side, this conduit goes underground to the bus, where it comes up and then into the back of that wood box over there. That's it, okay? Now with this setup, I've got enough power. I can run my deep freeze two or three hours a day. I can run laptops for video editing. Uh, run DC lighting off of some LED lights. Charge my cell phone, that kind of stuff. It's enough for day to day out here. I very seldom have to run the generator. This is my 4,000 watt generator. That generator, when I do run it, I hook up a battery charger to the bank. And what I'm doing, I've got a battery charger down here. This was from, uh, I keep wanting to say Northern Tools. This is from Harbor Freight also. I put this on 15 amp boost mode parallel to the batteries. So I hook up, let's see which way do I go? Positive on that side, negative on this side, so it charges the whole bank in one unit. I figure 15 amps across four batteries. Roughly, it's a little less than four amps per battery. That's fine. You know, you're not going to hurt your batteries at that level. Uh, 15 amps coming out of here is less than the 20 amps that's capable of coming off the charge controller. All right. Uh, at the moment, it is morning still. It's probably not 10 o'clock. I don't have my watch on, but let's just take a look through here real quick. Um, sorry about the handheld footage. I didn't feel like grabbing my tripod. Okay, 14 volts coming off the panels right now. They're rated at 18 volts at noon or something like that. Okay, we're pulling 9.72 amps at the moment. That's not bad. Uh, battery showing 71%. Battery voltage 12.5. I'm not running a load. Um, my load is coming directly off the batteries. I'm not pulling a load through the charge controller. I've collected two amp hours already. I have not used any amp hours because I'm not running a load through that. Um, 30 degrees Celsius. I should see if I can change that to Fahrenheit because I don't remember Celsius well enough. I grew up in Canada, but it's been a while. That's uh, settings for automatic load if you wanted to do it. No error codes, and we're back. All right. That was showing 11.9 when I first hooked it up. Now, if I pulled or shut off the solar, that would drop down again, obviously. But for what it is, it looks like a nice unit. We'll come back and do a review later. But so what I've been doing the last week or so Last thing in the morning before I went to work, I'd look at my um, voltage level on the battery bank and write it down. And then when I first got home before I turned on the load, I'd write down the voltage then off of the same battery voltage, which is inside. So it's not exactly the same as what's out here, but it's close enough, right? So that way I could kind of get a benchmark for a whole week. How much did I use? How much did the old charge controller replenish? Okay. Now I'm going to do that for the next week off of the new one and kind of do side by side. You know, no two weeks are the same, but I figured by doing it for the whole week, I'd get a, a good mix of, you know, cloudy days, sunny days. It's mostly sunny, but this is monsoon season, so it actually has been kind of cloudy lately. 
So we'll just kind of let it run for a week and uh, we'll do some numbers on it after that. Um, that's basically it for now. Um, I didn't do any serious changes on here. I just un unconnected the wires and then connected the wires to the new controller. So no changes there. I just un you know loosened the terminal, pulled the wire out, put the new wire in, or the new controller in, same wires. So that part's the same. That should give us a pretty good idea if the new controller is pulling better power than the old one. Okay. Uh, I didn't document how many amps I typically got off of the old charge controller. Um, I don't remember ever seeing it above 12. 10 to 12 was probably the most I ever saw. So I'll kind of check this out later today when it's closer to noon and just see if I can get anything more than 12. Uh, the last thing while I'm thinking of it, um, in the future I am looking at upgrading solar panels and so on and I thought let me do the charge controller first. That way if I do get bigger panels I can plug them in and the charge controller is rated for that. All right. um, I don't think I can get more than about 5 amps per kit I think was the most I would expect to see. Uh, I never really tested per kit except for the very first video when I first took them out of the box and it was uh, already afternoon by the time I plugged everything into one battery and that was before I bought the uh, the bigger batteries even so I don't have any hard numbers on that so anyway love the sounds out here in nature uh, today is September 9th and it's 11 o'clock in the morning I just wanted to get that on the clip these panels have not yet been adjusted for this time of year. Uh, I'm going to adjust them the week of the 21st. That's uh, fall equinox. Uh, I may not have very accurately measured these in the first place. In fact, if you look from the end, this one is a little lower, that one's a little higher, so they don't match. So one of these, at least one set of holes is wrong. But what I've got here, the last time I did these, I've got a series of holes, so it's on the top hole there. There's a hole right here. And then way down there is the last hole. So this will be September and March, and this will be December. Not having thought it through very well, where the panels are now, okay, now it's, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. You can see the, the shade way over here, right? Winter time, it actually about one third of the panel is shaded. Um, not ideal, obviously, because your worst solar is in the winter and then you're also shading it. So I'll probably move them a little bit this year somehow, either higher, move them back, something. I would just have to extend the wire on this end and then I can move them back. What I'll probably do, leave the second post where it is, move the first post that far back and then kind of go from there. Uh, to mount these, I haven't talked much about this lately. I took a post hole digger, dug a hole, dropped the, the 2 by 4 on the ground, packed the sand, sand around it. They've never moved. I've never had any trouble with that. I was concerned about that. You know, if the wind would be a factor or whatever, hasn't been. So, quick and simple. Um, 2 by 4s knocked them together. I come up with a spacing pattern. I could have put them tight against each other no advantage to having the space. Um, this way I actually set it up so that I didn't cut off the, these are normal wall studs, so I didn't cut them off at all. So, I mean, lengthwise, obviously, widthwise I did, but um, I kind of just quickly sketched it out and knocked it together and it's been doing well enough. So later on, yeah, we'll do something bigger panels and everything, but for this year, uh, these have been out here for coming up on a year now forget when exactly I put them out now, but um, went all through last winter and then now we're into September again, so I'm pretty sure I'm about at a year. Well enough, you know. All right, that's it. Oh, battery showing 12.6. We're getting there. Cool, that's it for now. We'll come back later when I get some numbers later well that's about it thank you so much for watching yeah that should work cool i do things differently oh 
And please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Thank you so much for watching.